What's going on my fellow freelancers, your dude Sly here, back at it with another Anthem video for you, and this time, let's talk about some of that sweet, sweet loot. On top of checking out some masterwork loot, we also have another set of challenges to take a look at as well. Actually, I think it's a new system of challenges. Now, I wanted to mention this set of challenges in my other video where I talked about challenges and trials and stuff like that, but unfortunately, I wasn't allowed to talk about or show this gameplay until February. So we'll check that out and my haul of loot along with some of my end game gameplay. Of course, we'll also take a look at that new set of challenges known as the Challenge of Valor. But before we do, Let's get to those disclaimers. I was recently invited to a capture event held in San Francisco where all of this gameplay took place. EA brought me down as part of the EA Game Changers program, so a thank you goes out to BioWare and the EA community managers who helped put this event together, as well as EA itself. It was an absolutely awesome experience, and it was cool to be part of something like that. With my side set on Dragon Age and the next Mass Effect, Hopefully it can happen again. Also know that this build is fairly old as well. A lot of things in here can change or have changed or nothing can change. And like I mentioned in my other videos, all the bugs I experienced while playing are actually fixed in the final build. But enough about that, let's get to the video. And let's start out with the new set of challenges I found while snooping through Endgame for Tarsus. Now I'm going to be perfectly honest you guys and let you know I have no idea what all of this is about. I randomly started talking to a citizen of Fort Tarsus, a man simply named The Bard. Next thing I know, something cool happened. Also, judging by the lore this guy was spitting at me, I have a feeling this might be something special, and it might just continue on in other areas around Fort Tarsus, with each new place handing out new challenges. Now, this is a complete and total guess, but my spidey senses are tingling. It could be the burrito, but I think there's something going on with this. The Challenge of Valor is set within the new area of Fort Tarsus. Now this area is out in the open and kind of slightly off to the right by the stairs. It's close to the hallway that leads to the bar and fairly close to the Three Matthiases. Now it's known as the Challenge of Valor. So far we've seen our daily, weekly, and monthly trials that are downstairs, our in-game challenges along with a special set called Path to Glory, and now here we have Challenge of Valor. So as you can see, it says prove your valor by completing events in free play, strongholds, or contracts. Then when you walk up to the Challenge of Valor mural, it shows a long list of things you need to fulfill. 100 events in free play, 25 strongholds, and 25 contracts along with 25 reinforcements. Now I'm not 100% certain here, but I'm pretty sure reinforcements is talking about quick play. Within the expedition menu, you can either launch your own expedition and keep it private, or have it public where others can join you. If you click on the map, however, and select quick play, you will now join a random team who has an open slot within free play or a stronghold rather than making your own session. Now depending on what you select, that's going to tell you which you know what you do, either a stronghold or go out there and free play. Once you load in with another team and then you finish say a stronghold or an event in free play, I think that will then count as reinforcement. Once again, speculation, but it fits. Now what happens after all of this is completed? Well, that's anyone's guess. And if I find out anything else, I will definitely let you guys know. Okay guys, so next up, let's take a look at some of the loot I brought back through my end game experiences. Now, as you might have saw, I uploaded two end game missions today, a legendary contract as well as a new stronghold. Both were played on Grandmaster 1, and quite a few masterwork weapons and gear have dropped for me. However, out of the entire event, all the people that were there, only two of them had legendaries drop. One each, and I was definitely not one of them because my RNG is terrible. Now, due to that damn stronghold taking up the majority of my playtime, I only had the chance to play on a couple of different suits that day. So let's start off with some masterwork gear for the Interceptor. Starting off with some masterwork strike systems, we have Sanadine's Respite, a throwing star that melts through armor. The intrinsic perk for this piece of gear is actually pretty cool. It restores 5% of your shields for every critical hit that you land. And as we talked about a few weeks ago, inscriptions are a huge part of creating your build and anthem, and masterworks come with four inscriptions, including a brand new pool of unique inscriptions that only these high level items can have. We also have 15% ability speed, 50% speed increase to your support systems, 13% more ammo for sniper rifles, and an extra 30% damage to elemental attacks, which is absolutely huge. 
Moving on here, our next piece of gear within Strike Systems is called Sudden Death, also a masterwork piece. Now I talked about this a few videos ago, but it's also worth repeating here. No matter which javelin you use, a masterwork weapon or a masterwork piece of gear is simply just an upgraded version of the same abilities that you've used before. Each ability slot, no matter the javelin, can equip one of five different abilities. A masterwork piece of gear will be one of those five and it will act exactly the same. The only difference is that masterworks have a special kick to it by way of an intrinsic perk and of course they have four inscriptions. For example, this next piece, Sudden Death, it's really just a high-end version of Tempest Strike, which is an ability you can use from the very beginning of the game. This way you know how it will act, how to use it, and its efficiency. It's now just a bit more powerful. So Sudden Death is an upgraded version of Tempest Strike. When you have the elemental aura from a combo, each melee landed will deal explosive damage on top of your melee damage. It also gives your other ability 10% more damage, 45% support speed, 40% electricity effect, whatever that means, and 10% more shotgun ammo. As we look through our weapons, I didn't get really anything all that great until a bit later on as you'll see here soon, but this does show you a good comparison here though. Take a look at this blue or rare versus the epic. The rare has three inscriptions while epic has four, but more so than that, take a look at the percentages here guys. The rare inscription gives you 9% more armor while the epic version gives you 24% more armor. The next one below the armor gives you 20% more ammunition, but the Warden gives you 23% more ammunition. Then on the other side, RNG kind of throws us a curveball here. It gives us 20% mag increase on the rare versus 15 on the epic. However, take a look at the final inscription for the Warden. An extra 55% critical hit or a weak point damage, which is massive, especially for just a single weapon. Moving on to my favorite area within the game, guys, let's check out some components. Now, our first masterwork here is called Talisman of Power. Look at that armor and shield increase, guys. It is huge. But on top of that, your strike system ability gets a 10% damage boost. As for the intrinsic perk here, which is what makes a masterwork a masterwork, anytime you land one of your abilities, it boosts the other ability by 50% as long as it's used within five seconds. Now there's only two inscriptions on these components and one of them is a little mysterious. 40% increase in luck. I honestly really don't know what luck does with an anthem, at least not yet, but that would make for a good video later on. So as soon as I find out, I will definitely let you know. And then the second inscription here, 15% thruster life, which is always good. Moving over to my main, the Ranger, we'll take a look at some masterwork abilities for the assault launcher first, and then we'll move over to weapons after that. Starting with Avenger's Boon, which is an upgraded Pulse Blast. When you use this to detonate a combo, it'll deal impact damage. By the way guys, the combo system was way more complex than I originally thought. It's not as simple as just Primer and Detonator, something else I plan on going over here soon as well, and it's going to be pretty in depth, so look forward to that. But back on topic, take a look at this intrinsic perk guys, it's called Striker's Strength. Hitting an enemy increases melee damage by 110% for 20 seconds. That is an awesome ability for close quarters combat. Now, I'll skip the inscriptions from now on so this video doesn't drag on for eternity. Next up, a recurrent vengeance. This is an upgraded seeking missile. Also a good ability and also a detonator as you can tell by the symbol next to its name. But its intrinsic perk is after defeating an enemy, regain 100% charge for this ability. So it has a chance to instantly recharge once every seven and a half seconds. Maybe this is where that luck stat comes into play. All right, so moving along here, let's check out the Ranger's components. First up, Vanguard's Badge. Increases melee damage by 30% and electric effects by 30% of base. Getting a melee kill restores 20% of your shields. Another component we have here is Combined Arms. It increases overall grenade damage by 5%, but on top of that, defeating an enemy with one ability can increase the other ability's damage by 60% as long as you use it within 5 seconds. And that means 5 seconds of it proccing. So it's something you have to try and use together fairly quickly. Once again, it's all about having your loadouts work together. Okay guys, moving on to the last little bit of loot here, take a look at the stuff I was giving during a Grandmaster Stronghold. This is a lot of loot, and while it was absolutely brutal, the loot was quite generous. For my first masterwork weapon, the Savage Light Machine Gun. 
10% ultimate damage, 2% gear speed, more sniper ammo, and all ammo is increased by 15% upon pickup. And the next and final masterwork drop was another ranger component, combined arms, which is what I already have, but hey, you can't win all the time. However, on top of all that, tons of epic loot, which I didn't really even have the time to sort through. Now originally, I had an extra run through where four masterworks dropped for me, a bunch of those were weapons, and my other friend who was in my squad had five masterworks drop, which is something I also took a look at. And judging by the giggles he had, it was pretty good loot. However, when I got back home, the entire file was corrupt. So my second stronghold, another legendary contract, lots of loot, all of that, poof, gone. So that is quite unfortunate, but not that big of a deal. And with that, guys, that's it for me, freelancers. Just wanted to share these things that I've been seeing around Fort Tarsus, as well as some of the powerful loot that dropped my way. Once again, I wasn't as lucky as the other two game changers who had legendaries drop, which is crazy considering we weren't even on the hardest difficulty. But anyways, guys, I am out of here. Thank you all so much for watching another Sly Nation Anthem video. Hope the loot looks good, and if you were in the VIP demo and you plan to go back into the open demo, you do need to download an update before jumping in. So make sure to check that out, and from what I hear, servers are going to be good to go. So here's hoping. We are just two weeks away from Anthem going live for Origin Premiere members as well as EA Access members where you guys get 10 hours of playtime a full week early, all starting February 15th with the official worldwide launch on the 22nd. So cannot wait for that, guys. Hope you all enjoy it, freelancers. And if you're new to the channel, then welcome, my friend. Subscribe for lots more Anthem content as well as other videos, including Division 2 and Destiny 2. Spank the thumbs up, but only if you enjoyed yourself, and feel free to check me out over on Twitter or Facebook, at Sly Nation or Sly Nation Gaming on the FB. Have a fantastic demo experience, you guys, and keep all those eyes open for more vids coming out soon. But until then, this is your dude Sly, and I'll catch you all next time.